is racial. Well, it's bad. I like that. Now, check it out. The white ball dominates everything, right? The Nazi sh the yellow ball, the red ball, right? And the game's over when the white ball drives the black ball completely off the table. <sighs> now, why is that? I don't know, but I'm sure you tell me, my brother. <laughs> sure you right. Look, it's because of the white man's fear of the sexual potency of black yeah. balls. Now, that one was kind of interesting. That was interesting. You see, what was... I see where you're going, and the pool table is the earth. That's why it's green. Oh, shit. See, your shit coming out now. And the world, they used to think it was flat. School him. Sometimes during certain periods, there's conscious focusing on certain segments of reality data and later due to the dynamics within the total environment the same body of data slips into the realm of unconsciousness for individuals as well as for the total collective for example in the framework of the white supremacy system culture it is current phase of refine in its current phase of refinement white supremacy is in, is in its current phase of refinement it is no longer involved to lynch black men hang them on trees and castrate them it is no longer the style to speak overtly in terms of killing the n-words thus there are many who believe that these activities these thoughts and acts have ceased to be a part of reality within the culture however these modes of thought and behavior were handled consciously and overtly in the recent past only until ball games became fully <clears throat> became fully established as the major national included and indeed global pastime in the western civilizations hey joseph ward happy monday welcome back to on the shows of giants we're here reviewing the isis papers the keys to colors by dr francis Cress wilson today we're covering chapters 10 11 and 12 and we're kicking it off with chapter 10 is ball games as symbols the war of the ball and that's why I started with the clip. It's racial, man. He talked about genetic material dominating to help stop genetic annihilation. All right. <clears throat> the global white supremacy system culture is the sum total of the conscious as well as the unconscious tactics, strategies and methodologies evolved in all areas of people activity. Additionally, these maneuvers seek to prevent white genetic annihilation and attempt to resolve the psychological anxiety and tension re related to that ever-present threat. So remember, that's the basis of Dr. Welsing's theory is white people have a fear of genetic annihilation. White people who, what she believes, started off as albinos who left Africa or were run out of Africa and they have uh, a certain resentment against the melanated Africans, but they also have learned that they are the genetic minority on the planet. And because they're ge the genetic minority, they also realize that they can be bred out through intercourse. So in order to prevent genetic annihilation, they had to strike first. And that is the system of global white supremacy. All right. So we're talking about balls. We're talking about balls, right? We're talking about white men's fascination. These nuts. <laughs> Got he. <laughs> Got he. <laughs> white men, white men historically have had a clear fascination with these nuts. <laughs> Got he. <laughs> <laughs> the testicles contain the genetic material and the penis transports the genetic material in the act of ejaculation. Thus, in the white brain computer, there is a dominant association between balls or testicles and contest of power. The ball games, the ball games, there's a psychology in the symbology behind the ball games. Dr. Wilson believes that white people don't just play ball games for fun. White people play ball games for a specific reason. And we're going to find out what that reason is. Why do white men play ball games? Why are white men obsessed with black balls? 
black balls who carry the greatest genetic material, who have the greatest potential of wiping out the white population. Right? Because the white, because this white genetic survival conflict is not handled overtly and consciously, there's a neurotic preoccupation in the white psyche with genes, genetic material, testicles, and penises. Yet, at another level, the preoccupation was, is actually with warfare. Bam! There it is. So, ball games, sports, balls, testicles, warfare, the actual sport, the actual playing of the sport, the, con the contesting goes into it. And the winner of the contest is usually the strongest, the best, the fastest, the biggest, strongest, fastest, especially like football. If you are bigger, stronger, faster, you have the greatest potential to win. And if you are bigger, stronger, faster and smarter, you have the greatest potential to win. It's warfare at the end of the day. Continuous warfare is required to prevent the genetic annihilation of the global white minority. Right. Continuous warfare is required to prevent the genetic annihilation of the global white minority. So we have to engage in some types of warfare. So in the past, to show their fear of white genetic annihilation, you will have the lynchings coupled with the castrations and the castrations of black male genitals. Hey, I have my black balls. The more black people we kill and the more black people we castrate, especially, excuse me, specifically, the more black men we take out and the more black men we castrate, less black men that we have to worry about as far as wiping us out genetically because they have the greatest potential all right games and play are the work of children it is of the means by which through the handling of toys and objects in the symbolic way children master adult role expectations and attempt to resolve unconscious conflicts brought about by the dynamics and interplay of factors in their surrounding environments playing games then become the child's unconscious attempt to master the environment its conflicts and threats to the child's sense of security children learn or people period human beings learn through play ask those who play sports in any kind of um contesting activity strategy critical thinking problem solving learning how to be better than somebody else there's there's tactical things that come out of play that, and especially if you do it right, if you're the best, that's because you have the best skill sets. You have developed yourself the best. Through play, you learn how to solve problems. Critical thinking through play, through games, through sports, you learn how to solve problems. Critical thinking, how to overcome obstacles, how to work together with people, how to solve problems as a collective, how to have self-control, how to contain yourself how to listen, how to lead, how to follow. These are things that you learn from playing sports. So it's not just for fun what she's getting at. These games, these sports are not just for fun. White men have an obsession. These nuts. <laughs> Got he. <laughs> Got he. <laughs> They have an obsession with the testicles of the black men. So those who have taken the trouble to study games throughout the world realize that not only the play in the games with children, but most specifically the games in adult life as participated in by giving people reflect their history, folklore, traditions and conflicts. Now, read this. And this is by Frederick. I mean, excuse me. Listen to this. <laughs> this is by Frederick V. Grunfield. And this is from his book, Games of the World. He stated, though the modes of gameplay tend to remain constant, the symbolism is often influenced by contemporary events, particularly by the politics of the day. During the Napoleonic Wars, for example, chess sets were made showing Napoleon as general, Napoleon as first council, Napoleon as emperor, always, of course, with the Corsican assuming the position of the white king. You can shape people's minds. That's what I just got through telling you. You can shape people's minds through games, through sports, through play. I, I'm a former athlete. I know this firsthand. I've, I've played football from the time I was probably like six, 
through my 20s. Football was my life. We consumed it and it shaped the way we viewed and lived in the world. Because I was an athlete, I had to do things different. It shapes us. People, it's, it's like people who come from the military think different. People who are athletes, they think different than people who have not engaged in that type of of play in those type of games and in, in, in those contests going against other people for supremacy you know the type of mindset you got to have to play like something like football and then play play like 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 ray lewis or something i have my i'm here to take your soul i'm here to take your soul i'm here to show you that i'm more man than you but why is that why why do i need to especially if the white men who's obsessed with the sports why do they need to, to try to prove their manhood through the sports the suggestion here is that all ball games in the white supremacy system culture similarly play out at the unconscious level dominant political i.e power concerns the fundamental power concern in the white supremacy culture is white genetic survival through the supremacy domination so white men have to show power have to gain power have to become powerful through sports because through the through these balls, because through the genetic balls, they understand that they are inferior. And once again, that leads to their obsession with these nuts. <laughs> Got he. <laughs> Got he. <laughs> There's a method to the madness, people. There's a method to the madness. I have a weird sense of humor. I got a different sense of humor. But hey, there's a method to the madness so stay with me right stay with me don't get don't let the these nuts get you thrown off because it's a part of what i'm talking about it's a method to the madness it's the white man's obsession such domination can be established and maintained only if white males and females the total white collective control all of the balls they have to control all of the balls they have to control all of the balls right of they have to control all of the balls or the testicles of the non of the non white men off and on of the playing fields and ball courts. In other words, the name of the real game, the power game, is continuous worldwide control of the testicles of all non white men by white males and females as the only means of ensuring white genetic survival in the world where the melanin producing genetic material of non whites is dominant. I'm just saying, it's a method to the madness. This is also part of entertaining, right? But breaking it down, like this is for for those of us who've always saw some of these things in these realms, like they really do like balls, big black balls and little white balls, right? For those of us who've always seen some of the symbology but couldn't articulate, this is this is our time to shine right here. This is our time to shine. We saw these things. We just didn't fully understand it and couldn't accurately articulate it. But, oh, man, we here. Dr. Wilson is helping us break it down. Remember, this is the reading of the ISIS papers, The Keys to Colors by Dr. Francis Chris Wilson. And this is the chapter, chapter 10. Yeah, this is chapter 10, Ball Games as Symbols. All right. These symbolic ball games have a highly important role to play at the unconscious level, informing all white males, especially, but also females, to keep their attention and their eyes constantly fixed on the balls as a matter of life and death. So I have to control the balls. White, white people have to control the balls. If they don't control the balls, then they lose all of the control. They can't, they can't not have control of the real balls and then not have control of the fake balls no if we are if we're not going to have control of the real balls you got to have control of the fake balls i.e we're going to own the ball games how many black people own sports teams again oh yeah not many like michael jordan it's only what michael jordan it's some i might be it might be some part owners and stuff but we know michael jordan is like one of the few but yeah But for the most part, the white men own the balls. Think about it. In the NFL right now, one of the main issues is the lack of black head coaches. The lack of black head coaches in the NFL. The people who run the balls. You got somebody who own the balls. Somebody got to run the ball games. The coaches is usually older white males. 
And the older they get, the more obsessed they get with the balls. All of these games are played mainly by men are centered on who has the balls and are concerned with who finally controls the balls when the game of power ends. The anxiety and tension that accompanies ball games is parallel to the anxiety and tension experienced at the thought in the white psyche of the white genetic annihilation. Similarly, the increasing violence that accompanies ball games parallels the increasing levels of violence needed to maintain global white supremacy as the entire non-white world seeks its liberation from white domination. So, you know, those these football games, these these basketball games, especially the hockey games, all the violence, violence follows sports. And remember, modern day sports are are a mirror or the modern basically modern day sports are our version of the Roman Coliseum stuff. Think about how our stadiums and the arenas are shaped like the Roman Coliseums. And what what were their sports? Their sports were gladiator sports. And we call ourselves gladiators and warriors and savages and all these different things because especially football, football is the quintessential modern American gladiator sport outside of like boxing and MMA. But we're talking about a level of popularity. Football is America's number one sport. And football is America's gladiator sport. It's where all the spectators come out to watch these gladiators go to war against each other over the supremacy of the balls and whoever comes out in the end is the victor and the ruler of the ball game it's the ruler of the balls now dr wilson did start the chapter off by saying she want she wants let me read it let me read it because y'all ain't gonna believe me let me read it she says this chapter is dedicated to all of the black men who through sports and through ball games in particular symbolic symbolically are recapturing the balls for that is also part of the struggle. They are forcing the oppressors of black people up against the psychological wall and thereby heightening the contradiction. So she want black people to be successful to recapture the balls. But we we have to understand that sports is not the end. Sports is a means to an end. Black people, black people, sports is a means to an end. It's not your child's job to save your family through sports. Get your old selves up off your butts and save your family it is not your child's job to save your family through sports okay hey so some of these highly symbolic ball games are played with white balls and others are played with colored balls usually black or brown generally the white balls are small in size whereas the colored balls are much larger in size parallel paralleling their respective genetic power in the white colored testicles the big black balls and, and remember the big the 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 sports, football, basketball, two of the, the two most popular sports in America have the big brown balls, and the least popular sports, but the money sports, the the white man money sports have the small white balls, tennis, golf, and then you have hockey, which is a pure uh, a sport that's purely dominated by white men, and its ball or the puck is black, but we're gonna get deeper into all that stuff there. And so, um, before football and basketball were dominated by the black players, they were dominated by the white players. And she makes an interesting point in a part of it. <clears throat> the the white the the sports with the little white balls are usually hit with objects. Even the puck are usually having white men having elongated objects, phallic symbol objects, and hitting those balls while the black balls are usually caught or carried and hit with objects. Now, we know the football is kicked, but the football is not kicked or hit with an object. It's kicked with the foot. It's not kicked with the phallic object, but the, the, the football, the oblong football is still a testicle. So... And she's also talking about sexual uh, an increase in sexual aggression from white women surrounding the players of the sports especially the the popular and the best players of the sports right so at the same time the white females step up the sexual aggression toward black and other non white males uh greatly increasing the incidence of white female white female black marriages so white women love black ball players because white women love black balls white women love He's nuts Gotti! Gotti! It's 
all I'm saying. That is all I'm saying. So, another point that effectively reveals the relationship of ball games to the white psyche and emphasis the extent to which balls are a symbolic preoccupation is the is the reference in the white supremacy system culture to the act of sexual intercourse as balling. The ball fantasy and the white psyche can can be best as stated as if the balls can be controlled on the court or the playing field through ownership. They can also be owned and controlled in real life. It is little wonder that in contrast to black males, white males play ball games as though they are a matter of life and death and not as though they are simply to be enjoyed, as I stated earlier, because in their psyche, these ball games are still warfare and warfare against the non-white people to control all the balls. We got to control all the balls. We have to remain dominant. If we don't control the balls, then we're gonna give up our power. Then they may they may be a crack in the foundation, and these people might try to take us out. They can't have that. And she also goes in to talk about the phrase black ball. The phrase black ball is to exclude. It means to exclude somebody, somebody get blackballed. That's they did something that there's a perception they did something, they get excluded from a specific area of space. And so also think about blackball in the sense of genetic annihilation. White men don't want to get blackballed by black men in the genetic material. So if if black men are having sex with black with white women and white men have the fear of genetic annihilation, then white men can be taken out, can be wiped out the i.e. blackballed and excluded from existence because of the lack of the dominant genetic material which is melanin dr wilson dropping them gems so specific ball games that's what she's talking about so we're finna get down into the nitty-gritty to talk about the specific ball games all right so Close examination of specific uh, specific phenomena in ball games that are popular in white supremacy culture will support the preceding discussion. In the game of billiards or pool, there are eight colored balls and a white ball and a long dark stick placed on the table. The object of the game is to use the long stick and causing the white ball to knock all of the colored balls under the table. The last colored ball not under the table is the black ball. When the game is over, all the white balls when the game is over the white ball is the only ball that remains on top of the table with the long dark stick then the game starts again okay. ratio will expand i like that now check it out the white ball dominates everything right the Nazis, the yellow ball the red ball right and the game's over when the white ball drives the black ball completely off the table now why is that I don't know, but I'm sure you tell me, my brother. <laughs> sure you right. Look, it's because of the white man's fear of the sexual potency of black yeah. balls. When I was watching the movie, when I was young, it made sense. But I didn't understand everything around it. It made sense. Now reading the ISIS papers, it made even more sense. I don't know who the director of Boomerang was or who the writer or whatever, but they slipped that in there. They sure slipped that somebody, somebody know a little something about a little something for them to slip that in there. Talking about white genetic survival. Use that long brown stick to hit the white ball to knock all the colored balls off the table on the flat green table, which represents the green earth. And you don't win until you knock the black ball into the hole, the last ball. And if, but if you white, if if the white ball go in the hole with the black ball, you lose. But if the white ball stays on top of the table, then you win. Victory, genetic dominance, genetic survival. Mm. There's a psychology behind the games. There's a psychology. Basically, she's saying there's a psychology behind all of the American-made games or all the, of the Western-created games. Or even the the recreation of the games in the Western mindset through a Western mind. All right. Now, she, then she goes on to talk about bowling. And bowling is interesting because bowling is usually colored balls 
knocking down long white pins with red necks and the white pins being phallic symbols and the black balls being of course the black testicles but you knock you roll the ball down and it knocks down the white pins and it's the reverse of basically the well it's it's explaining why genetic survival these black balls have more power than those white test those white phalluses so they're like 10 15 pins up there I'm, I'm not a bowling expert but at least 10 pins up there i think it's 10 pin and she's talking about the the central pin being the king pin and this ball this black ball being rolled down the lane and knocking all these white phallic symbols down domination genetic domination genetic superiority nature did it nature did it so and she says the symbolic fantasy the bowler sees himself as master and possessor of the larger black ball and thereby in control of the harm it can bring to the whole white male genital apparatus that's the psychology behind the bowling all right and she also says bowling was introduced to to america by dutch colonists in the 18th century it is a derivative of the french game gullies or guiles with, that was brought to England in the 19th century and later to Germany. Games that consist of throwing balls at various sizes that uh, that date back to ancient Rome and, Gr and Greece, early cultures that had extensive contact with black men in Africa. A modern French derivative of the ancient game is Jindy Bulls. V.F. Grunfield states, the French whites play bulls with what has been described as a mild fashion uh, fantasism. It is it is well to recall that a considerable period <clears throat> it is well to recall that a considerable period of french history was spent controlling black and brown men in africa and asia they have an obsession with the balls they have an obsession with the balls and once again going back to the football the main game america's main game is football the controlling of the elongated brown ball and also don't forget you have to, the the per the so usually think about with football right <clears throat> on offense things that help you win in the football game is time of possession time of possession helps you win the game and lack of turnovers so possessing the ball is a huge part of winning a football game if you the the less times you possess the ball, the less times you have to score. And one of the parts of scoring is also kicking that ball through the uprights, the field goals, the open legs of the white female waiting for the black genetic material to enter through copulation. Intercourse. I want to have intercourse with you. I should have put that clip on him. That would have been funny, but okay. But intercourse. White woman's fascination with tall, dark, and handsome. Say that again. The white woman's fascination with tall, dark, and handsome, wanting the tall, dark, and handsome's genetic material. But if she has a fear of genetic annihilation, <clears throat> then that would contradict her fear. But she still has that uh, that need for tall, dark, and handsome. So, also with with basketball, you're going to talk about basketball. Oh, also, also before I, before I get off of uh, football. So, like I said, the owners are usually white men for football. The coaches are usually white men, and the field general, the most the most popular position in American sports. The most notable position in American sports, the most important position in American sports, the most highlighted and noteworthy position that an athlete can play in American sports is the quarterback, the field general, the captain of the team, the leader. And the quarterback is usually a white man. And you see how they treat black quarterbacks. You see how they're treating Lamar Jackson right now. The Baltimore Ravens don't want to pay Lamar Jackson. But if Lamar Jackson was white, a white quarterback, Sam Bradford, kept getting million-dollar contracts even though he kept getting hurt. White men have to stay in control. They have to maintain 
their position of power to control the balls. They can't control the real genetic balls like they want to, so they can control the fake balls, though. Now, on the basketball, once again, the owners are usually white. The owners are, owners of the team are usually white. Now, basketball is a bit more liberal, so the coaches can be black. The coaches can be black. Now, basketball is nowadays dominated by black players, so you can have black coaches, and usually the most dominant, the most popular player, and the most important player in basketball is a black player. But through the psychological aspect that we're looking for, or through the psychological lens that we're looking through, Remember, you have to throw the brown ball into the hoop with the white net. The white net symbolizing the black, I mean, excuse me, the white net symbolizing the white vaginal orifice, the white yoni. The brown ball going into the white, going into the basket with the white net. Swish. Oh, skeet, 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 skeet. Oh, skeet, 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 skeet. That's what they're talking about. Skeet, 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 skeeting up the place, right? She like him tall. She like him dark. And she like him handsome. And she want to control the balls. Because the white woman, too, because Dr. Wilson also talks about that. The white woman also wants to control the balls. Y'all forgot. The white women want they cut. White women did these liberation movements and all these things because they want they cut. They help white men build this racist nation and they ain't never get they cut. And these white women want they cut. These white women want power. They don't want real equality. They want power. They want they cut. They've been oppressed for too long and held down and haven't gotten their cut for too long from white men. And they're like, nah, we want our cut. So guess what? If we can possess the balls too, we're going to possess the balls and outball y'all. Because we want the power to win. We, we, we was here helping y'all. We was here helping y'all oppress those black people. Give us our power. That's what the white women are saying. Give us our power. But if y'all not going to give us to it, we're going to go get control of the black genetic material. Yeah, we want the black. The white women want the black penis. The white women want the black testicles too. And then they can look at the white men and say, hey, we have what you desire to have with your little white cigarette. We got this big old cigar over here. You got that little cigarette. They have the greatest potential. They have the most. White women also want control of the most powerful phallus on the planet. So, yeah. And remember, there's an old adage within the white culture that a white man isn't really a man until he's had sex with a black woman. There's no adage that a white man isn't really a white man until he's had intercourse with a black woman. And then on the reverse, the black man wanting to have the power and the symbology of the white man desires the white woman. But they all lead to white genetic annihilation. So there's a conflict. There's a conflict in the psyche. Hey. So she's so she also she's she's talking more about how um white women like to hang around the popular black athletes of course they want the black genetic material um and so she also says the black male ball players in turn are conditioned under white supremacy domination to want to place brown balls and white nets white vaginal offices as a mark of supposed true black manhood since black males refer to white males as the man in placing brown balls and white nets and in between white goalposts the black males in fantasy become the man and they are celebrated as the man and they are treated as not the man but as a man now now you go from being a boy and treated like a boy to being treated like a man but you are not the man all right then she goes back to then she goes on to talk about hockey you know i said that earlier hockey is the sport where it's dominated by white men you can fight in hockey remember you can fight in hockey it's a white male dominated sport you do have sprinkles of black men coming in and when the black men do come in the black men do be better than the white dudes but it's still more white men it's a white dominated sport and it's not a popular and it's not a popular sport so a lot of black people don't even know that black people play hockey what one time for pk suban he, i don't think he played no more for but one time for pk suban right um but hockey is the sport where the white men they skate around on ice and hit the black puck into the white net they hit the black puck the black testicle 
the black genetic material, the, the semen, the sperm, pew, the skeet. They hit that into the white net, the white vaginal opening. And they hit what do but what do they hit the pup with? What are the white men hitting the black pup with? A long black hockey stick with a curve in it. A long and 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 the better the curve, the more you can you can control that ball, right? It sounds nasty, but it's it look, it's nasty. It is, it's freaky, it's freaky. But it's a method behind the man. Listen to what I'm saying because this is what Dr. Wilson is saying. Think about what I'm saying. It's the obsession with the black phallus. Obsession with black genetic material. So, hey, these men have the greatest genetic potential. And historically, black men are known for having the largest phalluses. And white men are known for not having large phalluses. So, if I envy you genetically and I envy you sexually... I want to get my hands on the longest and the blackest hockey stick that I can. And when I hit that puck in that net, I'm going to be so great. Then you got soccer. Soccer is a white ball sport. It's a smaller white ball than a uh, basketball. And soccer or European football tradition is played with a white ball smaller than the large brown football or basketball. The sport is less popular in the United States, but it's very popular in Central and South America and, and across the world. Soccer is the most popular sport in the world. Um, where was I? I lost my spot. The most popular. Is, okay. So the white soccer ball is not to be touched with the hands and it is kicked and kicked. The kicking of the white balls becomes very violent and vicious activity. Again, however, the greatest player and the master of the large white ball turns out to be a black player. So at this time of writing this, Pele was the most dominant soccer player in the world. And um, some of the some of the most dominant soccer players in the world are black. But I think Ronaldo and, and Messi, I'm not sure how much black they have in them. But some of the most popular and some of the most dominant Mbappe. Mbappe is a black man. Mbappe plays for the French team in the in the World Cup. He's a black man. There's a lot of popular. Um, Ronaldinho, all the boys, all the Ronaldos and the Ronaldinhos that come out of Brazil and stuff. Um, shoot. Usually the European teams that do good have black players. So once still again, like basically, most of these sports or all of these sports except hockey, when you think about the greatest football player or not necessarily the greatest but when you think about the positions of great football players you're gonna have a great number of, of black people think about the greatest basketball players that's usually a list with a whole bunch of black people the greatest tennis player that we can think of especially women tennis players uh black women the greatest golfer that we can think of is a black man you know what i'm saying so black people when they get into these sports with deception of hockey they are dominating the sports in droves and becoming the most popular and the greatest players in these sports. So white men set up these sporting events to have control of the pseudo genetic material. And then black people came in and started taking over these sports. But white men are still say we still going to be in control of what we need to be in these sports. We're still going to be the owners and we're still going to be the coaches and we're still going to be the quarterbacks. And so um, you got baseball and the baseball used to be America's pastime. And what is baseball? Baseball is where you take the long, take the long wood, the wooden back, the long wooden back and you hit the white ball and you knock the white ball out of the park. You throw the white ball through the bases and stuff. Now she makes an interesting point. So Babe Ruth is highly regarded and historically regarded as the greatest baseball player of all time the home run king and then came hank aaron and hank aaron was receiving death threats because he was coming closer and closer and closer to breaking babe ruth's record and basically white people was like if you break babe ruth's record we're gonna try to take you out now why would they go that far for baseball, for a man who's hitting the baseball out of the park, because the symbology behind it, you are the baseball king. You are the new home run king. You are the king of the genetic material. You can't have a black man 
to be the king of genetic material in real life and king of the genetic material in this game as well, then we lose. Well, they lose because the home run kings are still people who are, who are black. Now it's Barry Bonds and they can say he juiced up. It still don't matter. It still don't matter. Still not a white man. It's still not a white man. So, but all of this goes back to and Dr. Wilson's words, all of this goes back to a fear of genetic annihilation. The anxiety and fear that we're going to be taken out by black people through intercourse. It is only a coincidence that, uh, oh, my bad, I ain't going to read that part because she was talking about Arthur Ashe. But same thing with Arthur Ashe. Um, Arthur Ashe was, was getting threats and stuff when he was coming up to becoming one of the greatest tennis players in the world. So um, also... Also, actually, let me read this. Let me read this again because I forgot. So it is only a co coincidence that when Ash began to play tennis with champion force, the game then allowed the, the introduction of colored tennis balls in the major tournament. So basically, she's saying before Arthur Ash became the number one player in the world in 1975, the tennis ball was white. Ten let me let me Google this. The color of the tennis ball. Let me see. Original color of tennis ball. Okay. Yeah. So originally the tennis balls were either black or white or more. They were more white though. So the balls changed from being white to being the colored ball, the green balls. And so Dr. Wilson is saying that the the balls with the colors of the balls were changed because Arthur Ashe was dominating the white ball. So we we'll have to change the, the color of the ball. So you can't be dominating white balls like that. You can dominate the, the colored ball, but not the white ball. So, and then she goes on to talk about the white the um, the golf ball now. The tennis, tennis and golf are the big money sports. So you got to have money to play these sports. You got to have money to play baseball too, but these are the big money sports, right? And so golf, golf is basically similar to hockey, but you're not hitting it into a net. You're hitting it into a cup, into the earth, into a cup, into a white cup in the green earth. So you have this elongated phallic symbol stick and you're hitting this white ball into this white cup in the earth. In the colored earth, which would symbolize the mother earth or the art type of woman or the original woman, the black woman. So you're putting this white ball into the black woman. And once again, goes on to remind you that the old white adage that you're not a real white man if you haven't had intercourse with the black woman. So, bam, take the long stick, knock the white, knock the white ball into the colored earth. So, yeah, yeah, that's how you become powerful. You got to control the balls. You got to control the genetic material. And if you're not controlling the genetic material, then you're going to be wiped out. Ball games equal war of the balls. And war of the testicles. And ball games equal war of the balls, equal war of the testicles, equal war of the genes, equals race war. You dominate the balls, and you dominate the races. Any questions? Any questions? So that's the first chapter. That's chapter 10. So hey, family. Sorry to cut this video short, but I can only give you chapter 10 in this video. My audio files for chapter 11 and 12 were corrupted. I apologize about that. But never fret because you're getting chapter 10 here in this video. And stay tuned for me later in this week when I present to you the video of chapters 11 and 12 of the ISIS papers. I'm sorry my technology failed me, but I won't fail you. So stay tuned for later this week for chapters 11 and 12 of the ISIS papers. Once again, I love you all. Make sure you catch this next video.